we'll have Lee Veltman, who will discuss his experiences. Hi, welcome to William Ramsey Investigates. Tonight we have a very special guest, name of Lee Veltman, who has a very interesting history with uh, some very curious organizations in the United States, and he will explain that in greater detail. Lee Veltman, thank you for being on the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about your background, Lee Veltman. I, I suspect many people who are listening to this broadcast will are not familiar with you. So can you give me a little background about your uh, history? Sure thing. I was uh, born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, to uh, two very good parents who were middle class, upper white family. And uh, basically was raised in a very good family. I had three older sisters, two were half sisters, and I was the youngest of four. My grandfather was an interesting character up in Kansas who invented a valve for storing natural gas in the salt caverns in McPherson. He also was into antique cars and started an antique auto restoration college in McPherson, Kansas called the Blue Industrial Technology at McPherson College. And then because my dad comes from Texas, San Antonio, Texas. Um, don't really know much about my dad's side of the family. He was a quiet man, and he worked a lot when I was growing up. So me and him never really connected the way I wish we would have. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up, I was kind of different. I was very rambunctious and out there. Uh, I went to a Montessori elementary school before I got sent to a Augustinian Catholic junior high school. And it was then at that point in my life when I grew, we'll say, I'd always been larger than most of my friends, but I shot up around 13 to 5, 10 ish, about 250, uh, started getting, you know, just kind of picked on for my size and being, you know, bigger. So guys would want to fight me and stuff. And my grades fell. And to help out with my life, my parents thought it would be wise to send me to a military school up in Lexington, Missouri. And the school was Wentworth Military Academy. Went there, hated it, rebelled, tried to get kicked out, got in a bunch of trouble. Finally, my parents agreed after one semester there to let me come back home. And, of course, that's when I went to a school called Bishop Kelly for six more months, another semester there. And then I got it up going to a school in Tulsa here called Edison. And I got in trouble again. I chose at this point because uh, I broke up with my first girlfriend. You know how it can be sometimes. And wanted to go to boarding school. And that's when I got shipped off to a boarding school up in Westbrook, Connecticut, mm -hmm. called the Oxford Academy. One-on-one -on -one school, three months up there in Westbrook, Connecticut. Very great school. I actually did very well there. Uh, allowed my, my parents allowed me to come back home. And that would have been my beginning of my juniorish year. And that's when things went really bad. All of my friends back at that time, it was the 80s. Drugs were predominant in my city. Uh, all of my friends got into doing that as well as I as well did that. And when my parents and my oldest sister ratted me off to my parents for what my friends were doing. And I actually wasn't the one really too into the speeders and the mushroom eating and all that other stuff that some of my friends had fallen into, but they thought I was. So I was shipped off to the school in Northern California and that school was called the Cascade School. Cascade. But where in Northern California was it? Uh, it was outside of a town called Whitmore, California, up near Redding, California. Gotcha. So it was minutes to an hour east of Reading. So you were in very and far north, far north California. Yes, sir. I'm gotcha. here. Uh, I was halfway between Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen. Gotcha. And actually, that's where my friend Court Liddell, I'm saying his name a little wrong, Court Lindall, who does a lot of books about Lemuria and Mount Shasta and ley lines and stuff. Right. An amazing man. He has really helped me understand yeah, they say uh, Shasta, weird, uh, yeah, Shasta has a very sorry. weird history, sorry. Yeah. It's okay, I get a little emotional sometimes when I think about this stuff because it wasn't until about six or seven years ago that I realized explaining my life is easy. 
explain that two years of the school is impossible. And why is that? Why, um, is, it school, diff- why is it difficult? Uh, the school developed from a place called Synanon. Mm-hmm. And Synanon was started in Southern California on the Santa Monica Pier by a guy named Mel Washerman and Chuck Dietrich, or Charles Dietrich. And Synanon was actually labeled a cult. There's a movie about Synanon that stars Eartha Kitt. And basically the easiest way for me to explain the evolution of Synanon was a school that they started in Running Springs, California called Sea-Doo. How do you spell that? And Sea-Doo, C-E-D-U. But it actually has, uh, it's an acronym for Chuck E. D.D. Rich University or C as I do. C as I do, gotcha. And Synanon actually comes from a thing called Sins Anonymous. And I don't really understand this that well because there's these things called landmark forms right. and life spring or it's also known as EST, right. Earhart Seminar Training, right. which it, I have this diagram here. It's kind of very confusing. Well, let me ask you this question. It <clears throat> does EST is the foundation group and Synanon is an offshoot of EST. Is that right? It, that's the best way to describe it, yes. So because when you went it to... It leads to Daytop Village and a lot of other different things right. that have now been labeled the troubled teen industry. Troubled teen industry, right. So when you got sent to Cascade, did your parents or were they aware of the background of the school's ideology? No. Actually, they had no idea. Gotcha. My family, being upper middle class, hired an educational consultant when I looked for the school in Connecticut. Gotcha. And through that, they found this school. At the time, it was a self-help school. Mm Mm-hmm very well advertised for helping kids and they had actually a lot of success um with these programs that started from all this stuff gotcha uh it's when, kind of difficult because i hear alcoholics anonymous is a little bit linked into this stuff right. and i don't like talking about that stuff because i actually support alcoholics anonymous gotcha. a lot when you when you arrived at cascade did you notice that it was different than all of the other sporting schools all of the other i was sp- very freaked out when I got to this school. Okay. Um, coming from the Midwest, coming from such a conservative upbringing with very strict guidelines put on me before I even got to this school in Northern California to have my father and me drive across this cattle guard after the two weeks prior where I had tried to run away from home to try to keep going from this school and anything else that when I got there, my dad disappeared and I was locked there reminded me very similar to when I got shipped off to military school. Uh, I knew I was there, and I went through a strip search, had a bag of marijuana and a pipe on me, and gave that to this big brother of mine guy. And that's when things, uh, I like to call it the indoctrination process started. Mm-hmm. I agreed to live by their rules. I became a good Cascadian, is what I like to call all the survivors of the Cascade School. We were good Cascadians. Okay. We couldn't say things like Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin. If we did, it was called popping off, and we would get in trouble and have to do something called dishes at night. Um, the bad part about some of the stuff that happened while I was there um it's just hard to talk about because it's hard to explain to people what confrontational therapy is okay. and what developed out of these things. Uh, there was something called the Synanon Game. Okay. The Synanon Game became Cascade and Sidhu Forms or Raps. And three times a week we would sit in a circle and basically destroy each other's egos, I guess. You know, um, If someone wasn't pulling their way at the school, we would call them a whore a slut, an asshole, I mean, like just anything we could use to tear these people down, to make them feel their feelings. Interesting. And so then the the teachers and the administrators there were overseeing this type of activity. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, 
One of the things, and I will uh, actually refer to an article that I printed out about a school that was also tied into this stuff, is a school that was called the Benchmark School for Young Adults. Okay. And um, basically it says, when psychology is practiced by those who are not qualified to do so, the effects on the client can be severe and permanent. And since, I'd like to explain this at this point, because I was a client of theirs, right. but I was the student. My parents were the clients. Gotcha. I was the just the offspring of this stuff, I guess. And then this article goes back into today is the first day of the rest of your life, which actually that's a quote from Chuck E. Diederich, who founded Synanon. And it goes into this article, like it talks about, according to several sources, after a particularly harsh lecture from former counselor Joel Walters, who's now dean. Uh, I don't really understand what this article says. A student took his own life by jumping headfirst off a bridge onto State Street. <sighs> Suicide attempts were relatively common when the person who wrote this article was at Benchmark Young Adult School. And in one case, a student who was sent there for ADHD got so distraught and miserable that he decided to slit his wrist just so he could get a vacation. Interesting. And so, uh, in addition to these kind of uh, breakdown, you know, the ego sessions, what other types of psychological techniques did uh, the Cascade School implement? That's why it's kind of strange, because I compare it to the 12 Steps. Okay. They did workshops, and at CEDU, they were called um, Prophets. Which actually cool. comes from Cahill Gerbron's book, The Profit. Profit, gotcha. And so the workshops we did were actually labeled Truth, Youth, Friends, The Heroes Values, The Imagine, The I and the Me Workshop, and then The Summit. And that's why things are so difficult for me to explain because the people who I went to school with, we have a separation because after I was there for two years, they changed the program. Gotcha. So you had a totally so, kind of unique program. It wasn't anything commensurate to the standard U.S. high school. Right. No, the, even in within the troubled teen industry itself, Cascade is its own little bitty bubble. Gotcha. Uh, it's literally when I look at this grid that I have from an article Maya Savitsika wrote, it's Cascade and this other school called Carlbrook, and the Ceylon School that's closed down now, and a bunch of others, were all considered CEDU first-generation clones. Hmm. And so it's always been very difficult because when we talk about people who went through these schools, a lot of them got there because of something called transporters. What's that? Now, basically, a kid would be woken up at 2 in the morning by two ex-off-duty cops and basically handcuffed and taken to the school. A lot of these kids get sent to these schools through court order. Interesting. Like they have a choice to go to this boarding school or go to jail sometimes. So when you were there at, uh, at Cascade, what was the proportion of children that were sent there by court order uh, compared to those sent by their parents? I'd say 15% only. Basically, it was parents had to be well off to afford the school. I think gotcha. the school ran about $180,000 for the two-year program. Wow, that's, that's a lot. No one leaves the school for a whole entire year. So um, you never left the school the, from, for Cascade for a year, is that correct? Correct, except for a weekend visits and stuff that were very heavily monitored. All uh, communication between the client and family and any friends were monitored. And that's one of the things that I didn't realize until later on in life, that I actually disassociated from my family through this program. I replaced my family with the school and the counselors at the school. And so for me to find out about five years ago, reading this article that there was links between all this stuff right. and some really tragic things that happened at the school. Um, while I was there, a male counselor, I think maybe two male counselors were hired. Um, and I do know one of the counselors molested couple of boys. What was and the age group the of the school? Was it was it all 
High school students? Just high school students? Yes, sir. Gotcha. High school is basically between 13 to 18 or 17. 17 was the age rate they preferred to have. Right. When I was sent there, I was 17 to 19. How many, ki so how many kids were there while you were there? Oh, when I got there, there must have been about 150. Okay, they so built a couple more dorms through the year, I think. Capacity of the school went to about 350. And basically, at one point, they were putting people anywhere they could. Gotcha. And these were from all over, all over the country, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, this is William Ramsey. While we're on break, I'd like to talk about my website, occultinvestigations.com, where you can find all of my books. And I'm currently making a documentary about the Smiley Face Killers. So if you have a chance, please go to Indiegogo.com, type in my name, William Ramsey, and take a look at the project. And if you are interested, please contribute. Thank you very much, and back to the show. We were talking about, Lee, you were talking about the Cascade School, some of the stuff that you went through. You were there for two years. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about kind of what was going on at the school and the relationship between the administrators and the school uh, the students? Basically, it was a really good school. Most of the counselors there were there trying to do what was best for these students that were coming from dysfunctional families. And most of the counselors there came from that environment themselves. Um, the notes to me and other people, this stuff started 20 years before the school even opened up and still progresses to this day. Gotcha. The disassociation that they do through an indoctrination program of breaking down the family and stuff through different workshops that they did. Uh, at CDU, it was called the Brothers Keeper. Gotcha. At Cascade, it was the Truth, Youth, and Friends celebrations. One of the things that they loved to use was music. And in these different celebrations and workshops that we would do, um, I Am a Rock, I Am an Island by Simon and Garfunkel. Right. It was one of the songs that really can impact me to this day. Um, and then they did different exercises. One of the hardest things and the things I didn't understand was the truth celebration um after being at the school for three months basically you know not being able to communicate with any of my past learning the rules learning how to not break the agreement so i didn't end up having to do dishes uh one of the other punishments were if there was no dating allowed so if you flirted or they thought you were being inappropriate with someone else they would put you on what was called bands and you couldn't talk to the person if you were on bands with them but anyways, back to the, the very first celebration. It was called The Truth, and basically it was on a weekend from Friday to Sunday, and, you know, they would announce these celebrations or workshops, and they'd put this piece of paper on the thing, and everyone would be like, oh, they're going through this or this. And the first one was The Truth, and there had always been these running jokes about The Truth, self sets you free, and blah, blah, blah. Right. But that was just the motto of the celebration, that The Truth self sets you free. And so we would go down into the mill house. That's what this building was called, where they would do these different one uh, celebrations and stuff. Okay. And we go down there, and basically the first thing we would do is have a forum, which was just to air out any grievances that were going on, and uh, they would make us do a cop-out list. Now, you could cop out for not making your beds right, for, you know, popping off and singing music you weren't supposed to. And if you, you know, copped out to these things before you got busted or someone else pulled on you, it was not as bad as punishment. Punishments were dishes and stuff like that, where you had to scrub pots and pans or do cutting wood or all this other weird different things that they did up there. Gotcha. So, but that's what we would go and start off with was that forum and cop out list stuff. And then they brought out Pinocchio. Now, the reason they brought out Pinocchio was, you know, telling a lie stuff and your nose will grow and blah, blah, blah. But they also brought out the blackboard. And that was my biggest problem with the school kind of this day kind of haunts me that the very first word they wrote on the blackboard was masturbation. Hmm. And as a 17 year old virgin at the time at the school, I was very correct. Glad my friend Chad Farmer was there. He uh, basically was like, what you want to know? It's no big deal. And so it made it easier for all of us to talk about these things. Gotcha. Um, but one of the things that developed from this was, and the whole point 
of doing this exercise was to get these kids to feel comfortable being there. Mm-hmm. We had all come from very different backgrounds, very different experiences, right. and they didn't want us to feel like we couldn't speak about anything. Okay. So while I understood that, I didn't think that them trying to get information of a negative aspect was really appropriate, especially as a 17-year-old young man there sitting next to a 13-year-old girl who was only there because her parents had passed from a car accident gotcha. or other reasons like that, you know. So these kids were there at the school, not for being juvenile delinquents, you know, like because I earned my right to the school. Right. Uh, I didn't behave. I, missed, I, I snuck out my parents' car. I did a lot of things I wasn't uh, proud of. But sitting next to a person who was only there because of stuff that happened to her or him even, because there was many boys there and stuff. And then they were, you know, writing down words on this chalkboard like masturbation, incest, pedophilia. And it wasn't until many years later that I learned at Cinnamon and stuff, they were doing that stuff, that they would take that information and maybe they were blackmailing families, I hear. Interesting. So it's, that's the thing. is the CDU school is the one that has all the drama around it. Uh, mm-hmm. While there's a lot of drama with the Cascade School, and it, could, and it did get shut down for pedophilia or abuse of some kind, because I don't really know the whole story that well. That's why I'm wanting to rather tell this story as honest as I can so that other people will feel free to speak about these things and not have to be ashamed. Uh, right now in today's society, there's no way I can get around this. Uh-huh. We are fighting over principles and personalities. Gotcha. Democrat or Republican, Catholic or Muslim, immigrant or native. Mm-hmm. There's so many different aspects to different perspectives here that when I started seeing that I was losing friends trying to understand my own past, that my family has a hard time speaking with me because I wanted to understand why these things happened. Right. You know, the dysfunction of my family started before I was born. My mother's previous marriage and divorce, my grandfather being an alcoholic, uh, bipolar right. person, and other things. is how I ended up where I was. And it's one of the blessings of my life, too, because I was able to go on from the school and do the research so I've been doing these last five years to understand this stuff to come to able to be able to talk about differences between the businesses that currently are operating within the trouble team industry. Gotcha. There's many acronyms. There's many different ways to label these things to speak about a place like an outward bound or uh, something called Sioux survival urban wilderness schools are just two different aspects of different wilderness places. Hmm. And, you know, it's just, so some people will call it a summer camp. Other people will be like, oh, no, those places are where they make these kids hike in the desert and blah, blah, blah. It's not that bad to me. I'm also not going to be a person as a man to sit here 25 years later going, if I had a troubled teen, I wouldn't want him going to this location because I know that maybe this counselor is too abusive, too verbally abusive, physically abusive, et cetera, et cetera. And through the last five years, uh, I've met some amazing people. Uh, Lily, uh, Angela Smith, who runs Heal Online, Uh has done a lot of the, a lot of the resources that I use, I'll refer to her webpage. And so that's why I come to where I am to, because I don't want to get caught between this group or that group. I don't want to say that this school and the way they do their educational programming is negative if the recovery rate is high. Uh, There's not a very high recidivism rate as well. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started stepping back from this story when I was reading about it five years ago because I knew that I had basically been brainwashed. I mean, it's a harsh way to say it, but there's no way I can get around it. I went through military school, and, you know, I love the military. I was born in Oklahoma, so I love Oklahoma. I'm very American. I'm very, 
uh, theological and right. believing in a higher power. Right. And if it's your prophet is Jesus, or your prophet is Mohammed, or your prophet is none of the above, even you right. just fit into different categories to me. When you when you got done with Cascade School, did you think that you when you came out right after? Do you think that you had been brainwashed? It was just something that happened much out farther. Much after. Gotcha. Um, I was one of the unusual kids at Cascade. So I came there in January, and I was older. I actually graduated high school two years later. It's kind of the way they work their program. They, like I said, minimum two years. They actually tried to get a lot of kids to do a third-year program so they could get more money out of them. Okay. So my parents, being the way they were, I did two years, and that's it. No more. Graduated from high school the December before. And in January, I actually got, um, I don't know if it's lucky or bad. I got to go and live with my sister, my oldest half-sister in Hawaii. Hmm. Her, my brother-in-law out there was building the Nauru Towers. Interesting story there as well. Um, but I got to do that for nine months between there and going to the University of Montana in Missoula. Gotcha. gotcha. And that's kind of just... Uh, do, you have, do you have your degree? No, no, I actually dropped that after my first year because I didn't know what I was doing in college. Uh, I had done all my math I needed to do for business. And I've always had a very hard time with the English language. Interesting. Uh, I think that might be a little bit to do with my ADD or, uh, I wouldn't say dyslexia, but I know I have a hard time with the English language. And so writing papers and doing things like that, I'm terrible at it. Gotcha. So I got the chance to come back to Oklahoma and I worked at a federal law firm here in Tulsa, which actually leads to another very interesting story with uh, the Frank P. Murrah building. Oh, well, tell I me that story. Hmm? Tell me the Frank P. Murrah story. Uh, it's, there's a um, documentary called A Noble Lie. Yes. Yep. And actually the stuff you and I are talking about, A Noble Lie, blew off a year ago. I actually went to this guy with uh, Free Your Mind Films in Oklahoma City. Right. Uh, they did Adam Kokesh's Shadow Ring. Yep. And I tried to explain this stuff to them, and they were like, not interested. So I moved on. Wasn't the I guy, he has some to, Vander you know, Neuenhoff or whatever his name is? Excuse me? He has a long last name, Vanden Neuenhoff or something like that? Yes. Right. Tell me the information. Uh, I, I don't really know. Uh, I know that the Oklahoma City bombing was the very first terrorist act in the United States of America. Right. It was done by Nichols and... McVeigh, supposedly, right? McVeigh, yes. And they were down in LOM City, a white supremacist group. I've heard speculation about it being an inside job, and that's where I kind of just leave it alone because... You can see a Noble Eye documentary. It's done very well. It explains the U-Haul uh, rental up there in McPherson, Kansas, which is where my mother's trailer park was. Right, gotcha. So and since I used to work in that building, I knew a couple of people that passed in the explosion. Interesting. And my mother's family also comes from Waco, Texas. And a lot of people don't connect the Waco Branch Davidian stuff to the one year later Oklahoma City bombing being a retaliation about that stuff. Right. Wasn't that what McVeigh's claim is that he was getting back for that? Supposedly. Yes, right. that is his claim. Right. And a lot of people like to speculate that Nichols was an inside guy that, uh, and I don't get this, this is where they say it has to do with state financing stuff. And so with our I live in Oklahoma. We have some of the poorest paid teachers here. Uh, a lot of political issues going on right now here with the police and sheriff's forces, with um, some people being murdered in unquestionable situations, we'll say, gotcha. just to be politically correct about it, because I don't understand it. I have worked security here. I know many police officers and sheriff's officers. I respect the law. I um, would like to see the state of Oklahoma legalized, to be honest with everybody. Interesting. And besides that, I'll leave it alone. 
it's not my place to judge other people and what they do and how things are run because I'm not in a position to do anything about it. So let's get back to the kind of school, so the schooling and how you kind of dealt with uh, your life after the school. How do you think your two years at the Cascade School affected the rest of your life and your relationship? <clears throat> I think it was a blessing for me. Okay. I think it was a burden for many others. Why do you say that? To, I know um, a child that had committed suicide because he was molested at the school. I know that the family screwed the school, and the school, the school paid them off, but that's why the school's closed down now. Gotcha. Um, I've heard that this guy that did this is still free to this day. Interesting. And that's kind of one of the reasons I'm more worried about it happening to other kids because people are afraid to speak up. Right. While I was never physically or sexually abused due to my size, I was a lucky one when it comes to the percentage rate here. Um, you, I met a group a year ago. What do you, th what do you think the percentage rate is? Saya. Excuse me? What do you think the percentage rate is? I don't want to guess. Okay. I don't want to guess because it's way too high for me. Okay. When I was watching the Spotlight movie about the Catholic schools in Boston, men to young boys there in the 70s, I had to say, okay, that's just Catholic. That's just one there. It's, this is probably 25% higher than that. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, one of the things that I started hearing about was the female side of child abuse. And I didn't know that statistically speaking, women abuse children more than men. Interesting. And so were there it's been women a very difficult thing for me this last year to... Really jump into this story. Um, I was called three weeks ago. Um, I have a friend, Justin, and a friend, Amy, and they went to a school called Agape. And Agape leads to this thing that actually started in Texas in the 40s, which was the Brown School System of Texas in the 40s. And that progressed into this agape, roll-off, evangelical schools, which then became Aspen Education Group. And they bought to do Incorporated, which connects to my school. So that's gotcha. uh, interesting things. But when Amy called me up about a month ago and said that she had a new survivor, and I can't really say any names because I do believe the FBI is actually involved in this. Interesting. Um, but... Uh, when this new survivor came forward that she had been abused by her own father and her father ran a school in Missouri and um, he runs it to this day. We're trying to get it shut down because I can't say much because I don't know. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be talking about it now because we haven't really heard back anything, but I believe in freedom of speech. So I'm going to say what I want to say. Gotcha. And my friend deserves justification and reconciliation from what happened to her and all the other girls that are at this school in Missouri. It's a girl's school that are being molested, maybe. More than likely, they are being molested. I have actually got a confirmation on that and beaten. It almost <laughs> seems like so, so all these troubled teen schools, all these places for uh, children who are troubled, it almost seems like uh, sexual abuse is, is the norm, really. Um, unfortunately, that is the truth. Yeah. Um, growing up in Oklahoma, being such a conservative, basically Republican person myself, um, I was blind. Uh, there's a lot of people that love to talk about the awakening that's going on on this planet right now, and disclosure is coming. I don't buy that. I don't believe in that stuff sometimes. I'm a big skeptic, especially when it comes to abuse and cult understanding of stuff. Uh, so I just really get very much to the point where I just want to be very clear that the schools happen pedophilia happens abuse happens it sucks I don't want it to happen anymore but I can't stop it from happening I can only bring awareness to the environment that allows it to happen 
right. that when you will go in and you can go to YouTube and Google the last stop. It's a documentary that's supposedly coming out soon. I've been waiting for a year for this thing to come out, but we don't like there's just an ad for it right now. And it talks about the Ceylon school where they, these kids were boxing each other and they made kids sleep in a dumpster. And then you can look into the Samoa school down in Mexico where they were doing gay aversion therapy. Hmm. And then you can look into Tranquility Bay in Jamaica and Casa by the Sea and the deaths from neglect. It's just there. There's lots of them. I mean, I, when I started looking into this about seven or eight years ago, five years ago when I read these different articles, I just started looking into different things because I was curious. Right. And it was when I started seeing things three years ago, tying these things together to a different companies. And that's where I was like, okay, the D.A.R.E. straight incorporated program wasn't the same as the school I went to in California, but I did do both programs. Interesting. One had phases, the other one had workshops. So it all blended together. My whole life today very much centers around the fact that I support freedom of choice. Gotcha. Well, freedom of choice. I mean, and, a lot of these people are making choices about sending their children to troubled schools all over the country without knowing that these places were are places where abuse is endemic, right? Correct. And it's, it was when I it? had friends being sent to these places right. today. Right, so it's, I know not, it's Florida, it's Michigan, had, Georgia, Canada, you know, Kentucky, and you were, your instance was to California. Yes, sir. And uh, most of the things that happened, happened in Utah. Yeah. Why most is, of these why, abuse cases why is different Utah, things were... Why, why is Utah like a uh, center point for all of these kids where they get sent, you know, to these tough love... The law. Yeah. Utah's polygamist laws. Sorry, it's what it is. Uh, I don't really know how. There's a company called Worldwide Association of Specialty Programs. Many one can Google WASP is what I call it because that's the acronym. Um, it's a subcategory of a company called Bank Capital, which is underneath uh, Mitt Romney. Right. So I, I don't think it has anything to do with the Mormons. To be honest with you, I know that these schools were owned by this company. Right, which is owned that, in part, which uh, Romney was a partner. So he's basically making money off of these, you know, high schools, tough love high schools or whatever you want to call them, right? Correct. And then there's a guy in Florida named Mel Simbler uh, who's involved with this stuff. And the connection between them is Robert Litchfield, which connects to Mel Washerman and Cedu. Gotcha. So it's a very confusing mess. I am sorry if people are hearing this and being like, what are you talking about? Do your own research. Right. So um, you say, you say, Lee, that this school was helpful to you, but there's also abuse there. Would you recommend somebody who had a history of a no. troubled teen send somebody to one of these schools? No. Gotcha. What would you say is I, there, what's the proper, or what would you recommend instead? Um, a better system. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard because I didn't get sent to the school first. I got sent to a military school first. Yeah. I got sent to a rehab first. I got sent to these other places where they use different indoctrinations to work their program. Uh, one of the big things in Alcoholics Anonymous is it works if you work it. And that's kind of the truth. Um, I did 10 years in Alcoholics Anonymous. I actually left Alcoholics Anonymous due to my father's getting prostate cancer and me calling a friend of mine that lives in Israel. And he told me to look up everything about Rick Simpson oil. And when I started learning that I could treat up to stage three cancers, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, I was very interested in learning as much as I can. So that's kind of one of the things that set me down this path that has led me to today. Gotcha. Have you treated people um, medically with Rick Simpson oil? I personally know it's against the law where I am. Gotcha. I have friends in Colorado Springs mm -hmm. and uh, Jason Cranford is a good friend of mine who does Haley's Hope. I send people to those people. I know that I know very little when it comes to this stuff. My gotcha. friends are PhD 
John Hopkins University kind of people. They've done their due diligence here. But you have heard and, success stories with the treatment. Oh, yes, sir. We have many success stories yes. here. We've got Landon, um, who is a young boy that was diagnosed with leukemia. And he's alive today. That's good. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of success stories with Rick Simpson oil. So let's yeah, just wrap, and, you know, let's just uh, come to a conclusion. Is there anything else that you would like to add about your story, uh, survival story with Cascade, or uh, anything you'd like to recollect? There's a thousand things I could add at this point. Okay, do um, it. With the school, CDU stuff, it's very much you have to be very careful because there was the CDU school in Running Springs, California. But then there was also CDU Incorporated, which included that school, plus a place called Rocky Mountain Academy and Boulder Creek Academy. And so these things will split off into different things. And yes, it sucks that um, there are schools today that really basically are using really good advertising to basically get children to come to their schools for too much money. And I just really want to see many parents do what's right for the children. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend? I mean, you said, you know, the better system, but is there any other alternative other than these uh, types of schools? I think parents need to be parents. Okay. I know that for me with my family, I'm an exceptional to the rule with the dysfunction that happened within my family. My parents divorced. They didn't get along very well. My father was, Preferring to work and not come back to the house with three girls and my mother there yelling all the time. I don't blame my father for me and him not being as close as I wish we were today. I hope gotcha. my family will hear this one day and maybe understand I didn't want the disintegration of what's happened to my family through my mother's passing two years ago to happen. Gotcha. Gotcha. Basically, most families, I think, are great. Uh, most families don't deal with this stuff. Most kids aren't as juvenile delinquent as me and my friends were and the people that fit into this category. If you have a troubled child, connect with them, get involved in their life. Homeschool them if that's the necessary thing if they're not doing well at school. If you need help with this stuff, heal online, safety schools online. There's many web pages. Do your due diligence. Find a place so this kid could go and get the education for him that suits him. Many kids are so different today, and with basically the Common Core education that basically narrows it down to a very structured program, it doesn't work. So one-on-one -on -one schools, home schools, I'm really a big fan of the Montessori school system since I went to a Montessori school, my casino here in Tulsa, gotcha. which allows the kids to play more. You know, hour, 15-minute break, two hours, 30-minute breaks. Kids need to move, and so... It is what it is. There's no good solution here. Gotcha. Uh, well, I mean, at least you're advising people, you know, kind of work within the family and keep the people at home instead of sending them off to these coercive environments. Well, that's one of the things I've really noticed these last five years of my life, the disintegration of the family unit. Um, I used to argue with another survivor of the CDU school, Liam Sheff, who actually on YouTube, if you go and look up the troubled teen industry or... Liam Sheff has got a bunch of good videos about the CD school. Um, but he's into tribalism. He's into no piece of paper to get married, no licenses and stuff like that. Me and him butt heads about this stuff. I still respect the guy. I heard he's had some bad physical ailments lately. So, uh, But, yeah, you can agree to disagree here. And that's the best thing about this stuff. So if anybody has any questions for you and wants to contact you, where would you recommend them uh – Get in touch with you. You can get a hold of the HealOnline.com people. Okay. Or there's another group in L.A. called Survivors of Institutional Abuse, S-I-A. And a lady there is named Jody Hobbs. So there's many different web pages out there that people can get to. I just really wanted to bring awareness to the story for my friends that are sitting there not feeling like they can talk about what happened to them 20 years ago. Right. I know many of my friends were abused. Awesome. I know most of them were. So having 500 survivors I work with to this day 
all of us getting together and meeting and stuff. I'm very busy with this stuff. So find yeah. me if you need me. I like to help as best I can. It's one of those things that I'm just very jaded, I guess, and very not the nicest person. Because I think most of the fault lies on the parents. And so when they call me up, I'm like, I'm going to relate to your kid better than I do you. So, yeah. Gotcha. All right. Thanks so much. Lee Veltman, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you, Mr. Williams. All right. Okay, that was Lee Veltman talking about the Cascade School and his experiences. Just a reminder, all my books are available at occultinvestigations.com. I also have an active YouTube channel under William Ramsey Investigates. And again, I have an Indiegogo campaign currently about the SFK or Smiley Face Killer. So if you go to Indiegogo, type in SFK or my name, William Ramsey, and take a look at the project. And if you're interested, please contribute. Thank you and have a great night.